Welcome to the next video in maintaining a balance. So today we'll be looking at two dot points, one theory dot point and one first-hand investigation dot point. So the theory dot point says, describe current theories about the processes responsible for the movement of materials through plants in xylem and phloem tissue and choose equipment or resources to perform a first-hand investigation to gather first-hand data to draw transverse and longitudinal sections of phloem and xylem tissue. So, so far we've been looking at transport within, within animals, in particular looking at the different vessels that are involved, so our veins, arteries and capillaries, and the substances that are transported in the blood. So now we need to move on and have a look at the same kind of thing, but with plants. So the transport within plants takes place in two vessels known as xylem and phloem. So we talked about these a little bit in year 11, and now we're going to have a look at what actually happens in each of these different vessels in order for the substances to move either up or down the plant. So the chemicals needed for photosynthesis are carried by the xylem from the roots to the leaves, and the organic products of photosynthesis sorry, are carried by the phloem from the leaves to the other parts of the plant. So as we can see in the picture here, we have a cross section of a plant. Okay, so we've cut the plant straight down the middle and we can now see the various structures. We can see from this smaller part of the picture here uh, that we have a cross section of the root. And in that we can see the red part here is the uh, xylem and the blue part is the phloem. Okay so the red takes up a lot more of the root than it does the stem so that allows the water to move out from the soil and into the roots via the process of osmosis. Remember we talked in the year 11 unit of uh, patterns in nature about the importance of root hairs on the roots Okay, so the root hairs help to increase the surface area in order to absorb as much water from the soil as possible. So the water moves from the soil into the roots and then makes its way up into the stem. So as we move from the roots to the stem, the layout of the xylem and phloem changes. We then have this structure here in this green cross section of the stem that shows that the xylem is located towards the inner part of the plant and the phloem is located towards the outside of the plant in these little groups called vascular bundles. Then that continues up into the leaf and we can see in the cross section of the leaf very at the very top here that the xylem and the phloem only take up a very small amount of the leaf. So we've looked at respiration uh, so far and the importance of oxygen in the cells of all organisms. So Oxygen and glucose come together in the mitochondria in order to create energy that we use for growth, in particular with plants. They use it for flowering and obviously um, for general growth. And then the two byproducts that we need to get rid of is carbon dioxide, which the plant needs to get rid of through the stomates, which are the small opening on the surface of the leaves, and also excess water. So just like us, uh, plants also need to get rid of carbon dioxide in order to make sure that their cells don't become too acidic and also too much water can also cause damage to the plants. So having a look at photosynthesis, if we have a look, the general um, equation of photosynthesis is fairly, uh, is almost the reverse of the respiration re reaction. Okay, so carbon dioxide and water are our products. So the plants get the carbon dioxide from the air, the water they draw up through their roots. In the chloroplast of the plant cells, photosynthesis takes place. Obviously, we need sun and we need chlorophyll. And we have the carbohydrates, which are the sugars that are formed. So these sugars are used for growth and respiration. And sometimes they are stored in the organs of plants, such as fruit. And then obviously, we then use that as our glucose uh, source for respiration. We also have oxygen, which is released to the atmosphere via uh, the stomates and water, which is given off as well. So in the xylem in particular, water and dissolved nutrients form an ascending sap. So that means that the water is drawn from the bottom and moves upwards towards the top of the plant. Movement occurs as a result of a transpiration stream. 
Okay, so that means as water evaporates out of the leaves, which is basically the process of transpiration, more water is drawn into the xylem from the roots. So we'll be having a look at how that works in a second. Movement is passive, so we don't need any energy and there's no pumping mechanism, unlike in animals where the heart is pumping the uh, substances around the body. The movement here doesn't require any of that. And the theory which we need to know from our dot point is uh, known as the cohesion-adhesion transpiration or the CAT theory. And we're going to have a look at each one of those three things in a second. So here we have a picture of a nice big tree. So obviously with small plants, not as big an issue of getting water from the bottom to the top as with a plant this size. So we're going to have a look now at the cohesion adhesion transpiration theory and how each one of those things helps to move the water into the plant. So as water and ions move into the xylem from the roots by osmosis, root pressure forces the solution upwards. So obviously as more water gets drawn in, we have this push of water up and obviously as more come in the bottom, it pushes it upwards. Then we have cohesive forces. So cohesion means that things are acting together. So there's an attraction between the water molecules, between uh, one water molecule and the next. And what happens is we end up with this constant stream of water moving up the xylem vessel. So along with cohesion, we have adhesion or adhesive forces. So we know an adhesive is something that sticks two things together. So this is the attraction between the water molecules and the side of the vessel. So the water molecules stick to themselves, but then they also stick to the cell wall. So this leads to a process known as capillarity. Okay, so this is where the water moves up the very narrow opening of the xylem. So xylem are very thin, just like our capillaries, which is where we get this idea of this concept of capillarity. And lastly, we have transpiration taking place. So transpiration takes place in the leaves, water evaporates to the atmosphere and as one water molecule leaves, there then is obviously room for another water molecule to come in. So because this happens all the time, as multiple water molecules are evaporated into the atmosphere, more water molecules can come into the xylem and therefore travel up the plant. Okay, so as we can see, the three processes happen together in order to move the water molecules from the bottom of the plant to the top of the plant. Okay, so movement in the phloem. So unlike the xylem, movement in the phloem is bidirectional, which means it can go up or down. So the flow of materials is an active process. So unlike xylem as well, it requires energy. Majority of the process is driven by osmet, osmotic pressure, sorry, so which is brought about by the difference in sugar and water concentration. And we'll have a look at that in a second. And 90% of the dissolved substance that is carried in the foam is actually glucose, which we know is one of the main products of photosynthesis. So the reason why the movement in foam is bidirectional is depending on where the glucose is created versus where it is needed will depend on whether it moves up or down. So the theory of movement in uh, foam is known as the source to sink or the pressure flow theory. Okay, so it would be good to uh, commit both those names to memory as sometimes they can ask you about the source to sink theory or the pressure flow theory. Okay, however, if they say just to describe a theory of movement in the flow, you can use either one as long as your information below them is the same. So as I said, the theory is known as the source to sink theory. Okay, so the reason why it's known as the source to sink theory, the source is where the photosynthesis takes place and the sink is where the products of photosynthesis are required. Okay, so we know that photosynthesis takes place in the leaves of the plant, so they would be the source, and then the sink could be something like a flower, a bulb, something that needs a lot of energy, so therefore requires the glucose in order for growth to take place. So the difference in osmotic pressure drives the flow on sap flow or the pressure flow. The direction of movement depends on where the sink is in relation to the source, and that's what gives us that bidirectional movement. Flow is continuous if sucrose is being added at one end and removed from the other, which we'll have a look at in the diagram on the next slide. And loading can occur in two ways. So we have symplastic loading, 
where sugars, other nutrients and water move from cells to cells via the cytoplasm or apoplastic loading where sugars, other nutrients and water move from cell to cell via spaces in the cell wall. So we don't need to know too much about those, just you need to know that um, there are two different ways of which uh, our sink, uh, sorry, our source can load sugars into the phloem. Sorry. Okay, so here we have a picture that we can use to annotate and have a look at what happens at each of the different spots. So we have the loading of sugars, so sucrose and other material, uh, mineral nutrients into the phloem at our photosynthetic source. So as we can see, we have the leaf here and our, our source cell, which is where photosynthesis takes place. The concentration of the phloem sap increases as the sugar moves out of the cell and into the phloem. Therefore, the osmotic pressure increases. So as the osmotic pressure increases, it draws water from the xylem. So remember that our xylem and our phloem run parallel with one another. So water is drawn across via osmosis into this section here at number two, and therefore we end up with this pressure flow starting to form. The water then helps to travel or helps to move the sugars from the point where it's made to the point where it's needed at the sink, which as we can see here is a bulb of a, um, of a plant. And then offloading in the sink involves sugar and materials being moved by active transport. So here we require energy due to the concentration difference to move the sugar from inside the phloem to the cell. Once the sugar moves from the phloem back into the, uh, the sink cell, our concentration of sugar decreases in our phloem. So water is then drawn back into the xylem because the um, osmotic pressure decreases. And then we have this constant uh, flow happening all the time. So we have our loading at our source, sugar moves into the phloem because the concentration of sugar increases, there's more sugar, less water, water moves across from the xylem, the water increasing here helps to push it all the way down to the sink. Difference in concentration here means the sugar moves from the phloem into the sink cell, leads to a change in the concentration, ends up with more water here, so then water moves back into the xylem and we just have this constant flow. So we'll be having a look at a first-hand investigation to investigate how uh, or where substances move in plants. So we'll be having a look at using uh, a simple investigation using celery and a coloured dye. So a coloured dye, which is a nice red dye eason, may also use food colouring, travels up the celery from the water through the xylem. Okay, so we know that water and anything that's dissolved in the water, uh, the small particles dissolved in the water, so in particular the food colouring, will be drawn up through the xylem. So once the water arrives in the leaves of the celery, it will be involved in photosynthesis and some of it would then travel back down the celery through the phloem. So what we should see is these nice dark red dots here will be the xylem vessels and then the smaller red dots in between um, shows the phloem. Okay, so that shows that the water has moved up through the xylem vessels mostly and they've been coloured a lot darker than the other vessels. We also need to be able to create diagrams of transverse and longitudinal sections of our celery. So a transverse section is also known as a cross section here where we cut across the object. Okay, so this is a nice example of a transverse section of a piece of celery. And this here, a longitudinal section, is where you would cut long ways down an object. So when we do our investigation, we'll be creating transverse and longitudinal sections of our celery and drawing and labelling the diagrams. So this here shows xylem and phloem vessels underneath the microscope. So we can see here our phloem vessels. As we've said, phloem um, form continuous vessels with sieve plates that form in between the main cells. And then we have our xylem vessels here, which end up looking like this spiral type structure. So the lignin on the outside of the xylem helps to create these spiral structures and the xylem helps to give the plant a bit more structure. 
So again, this is just two other ways of looking at the xylem and the phloem underneath the microscope. Okay, the xylem looking like these little lines, which is the spiral type structure, and then our elongated cells with the sieve plates in between are our phloem. Okay, when we do a transverse section or a cross section and look at it under the microscope, the xylem vessels are much bigger, whereas our phloem vessels are quite a deal smaller. And what we'll do in class is we'll have a a look at drawing these in what we call a plan diagram. So instead of drawing every single tiny little cell, we can create diagrams that show that we um, where the xylem and the vessel, sorry, the xylem and the phloem are in comparison to one another, but not including every single tiny little cell. Okay, and here's another transverse section of a stem. So this time the outer edge of the stem. So we have the epidermis, which is the outer layer the phloem which sits towards the outside of the stem, the xylem sitting towards the inside and the cambium sitting between those two uh, vessel structures. So we'll be having a look at a couple of different um, examples of microscope slides for xylem and phloem, drawing them and labelling them so that you're able to distinguish between the two. Okay, and here's just another one. more you see... Um, the easier it will be to identify them. Okay, so again, xylem, phloem, right next to each other, and we can definitely see the differences. So in class, we'll be drawing the xylem and the phloem vessels together uh, so that you can have a go at practicing those skills. And that's it for today's video. Thank you.